Quirk and Spook arrived at the backup shuttlecock, finding Dr. MacBoy living in it. No time to explain, Boons. We've got to launch this shuttlecock into orbit on autopilot and blow it up, said Quirk matter-of-factly. Are you mad, Jim? said MacBoy. Haven't you blown up enough ships lately? My good doctor, replied Quirk, there's a war going on out there and we can't send communication signals. However, Starfeet has longer range scanners than the Klingons do, and so they may be able to detect the explosion of a vessel and investigate it to look for survivors, something the Klingons would never do. Besides, even if the Klingons noticed the explosion, they would merely consider it a part of the war. This is the time to do it. Also, it's a pattern that Scutty should recognize from the past. Jim, replied McBoy, we may need this shuttlecock someday for parts or something. Besides, it is now my home and medical lab. Yes, Boons, and that day is today. We are evicting you. And if there's no response, Jim? Then you've destroyed a perfectly good shuttlecock, said MacBoy crustily. Then, Boons, we wait for another chance and send up our remaining shuttlecock into orbit and blow it up as well. Spook, pleaded MacBoy. Please talk some sense into our captain. Dr. MacBoy answered Spook. We have little to lose by trying to make a signal of this nature, crude as it is, because if it fails, then we will still be on this planet forever, the same situation that we now face. All right already, you two. Do what you have to do. That's what they're paying you for. I guess I couldn't live in peace down here, knowing that they need us up there. The shuttlecock was launched into high orbit on autopilot, and auto started to jettison its fuel so that when it blew, the fuel would ignite and leave a long, thin trail across the night sky. There she goes, Captain, announced Spook. As Scutty once said, nice try, but it's like sending up a flare. Spook, let's hope Scutty remembers that occasion. Look up, alerts salute you. Way over there to the left of Andromeda. Klingon phaser fire is lacing the sky. And over there, notes Chekhov, a barrage of energy torpedoes launching from three federated vessels. There's your conventional war, Spook a feat of federated ships in Klingon space, soon to be met by the Klingon flagships. We all know very well the principle of territorial imperative as it applies in the Klingon philosophy. They never give up. Meanwhile, aboard the Enterprise, Scuddy had his scanning eyes open and had indeed detected the faint glimmer of a flare near a distant solar system. Scuddy then collected his part of the bargain, that of being the first to volunteer to test the new defense against the Death Wave and headed off in the direction of the flare to search for the lost crew of the Enterprise. Back in the present, Scuddy replayed the sensor tapes and reviewed the glimmer of the flare in a solar system far away. Was it just a fireball meteor? Or was it the sword of a shuttlecock? Scuddy headed off in that general direction to investigate. Down on the planet, some hours passed uneventfully until Lieutenant Uhara excitedly reported, Sir, we are being scanned. Someone has found us. It is the Enterprise. Their acting communications officer, named Mr. Scutt, is asking if we'd like to be transported up. Affirmative, Uhara. Two minutes, sir, to beam up. Mr. Scutt is presently on his way to the transporter room. It seems that he is the acting transporter chief as well, reported Uhara, perplexed. Ready, sir? Beam us up, Scuddy. As Quirk came off the transporter platform, he immediately became feet commander. He nodded a thank you to Scuddy, and noted the yellow alert as all entered the turbo lift. Battle bridge, said Quirk. Mr. Scutt broke the silence. I didn't think that you were alive, Captain, but it's so nice to have you back. Mr. Scutt, said Spook, if you didn't think that we were alive, you would not have been searching for us. It's nice to see you again too, Mr. Spook, noted Scuddy. Jim cut in. Who's the captain of this ship, Scuddy? Why, I am acting captain, chimed Scuddy reassuringly. Macboy, pleased, said, You are a man of many hats, Mr. Scutt. Spook did not understand and inquired, I fail to see why a hat would be necessary aboard the Enterprise, much less many hats. Mr. Spook, said Scuddy finally, I'm man in the Enterprise alone. Captain's Log, Stardate 3256.45. Recommend Mr. Scutt for commendation for single-handedly testing the Death Wave defense and avoiding danger to all but himself, and for effective rescue of a stranded crew. Captain's Log, Personal, Star Day 3256.455. One day I shall retire and return to that beautiful planet, one day, after peace arrives. Mr. Salute you, take us out of orbit, return us to Scuddy's feet. 